Hey everyone, so you've seen our previous few videos. We've been talking about the EVGA VRM heating issues, and those have been largely resolved through a two-step process. One's a BIOS update, which is not really required, but it will increase your fan RPM. It's still in flux. We, we originally reported that it was a 2200 RPM fan target for load scenarios, and now it sounds like it's going to be closer to 2000. So that's still in flux. Uh, but there will be a fan RPM change. It can be done through BIOS. There's also a thermal pad mod. EVGA is calling this optional. I would actually call this the recommended or required approach, and then the fan RPMs would be my secondary. But before getting to the tutorial of how to install the thermal pads on the EVGA 1080 FTW, this content is brought to you by AMD and their affordable FreeSync devices, including this ultra-wide display that's 2560 by 1080 and is available for $400. Link in the description below for more information on that. So for this mod, which is it's really trivial to do, you don't have to be intimidated by this if you've never taken apart a card before. We've taken apart a lot of these. Pretty basic process. You will need a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, it's just like an A1 head or something like that. So a Phillips screwdriver will do just fine. EVGA technically recommends a flat head. I don't really think that's necessary, but if you want one, it's helpful for removing the fan headers later on. You'll also need the thermal pad kit from EVGA. So these are the pads. They have a wide and a narrow pad included in the kit. So the thermal pads they provide you, there's two of them. They measure about two millimeters thick at the thickest. That would be this one. And this one is 57 wide millimeters. And this one is 26 millimeters wide. So this pad goes on your inductors or your chokes. I'll show you where those are and how to install it. This one goes on the back side of the card. You'll take this back plate off, and then it goes right in between these four screws. And I'll show you that as well. So it's easiest for this mod to start off by this is a new card. So we're going to peel that first. Once that's off of there, uh, the easiest way to do this is to start with the base plate. And so to do that, we need to remove the cooler and the shroud itself. So I, I like to do opposing corners here. You do not have to do that for removal, but uh, I suppose it will still put less strain on the card, though it's really kind of irrelevant. So we'll take the cold plate off, and the, uh, the, with the cold plate, of course, comes the heat sink, and with the heat sink will come the shroud, which is the front of the card. It's four screws. Very easy, so that's done. When I lift this up, you're going to see that the rest of the card will kind of fall off of it. So you can just lift up gently, and when you're doing this yourself, you should see that there's play in here. So there's play. Now, I'm not going to pull it off, and you shouldn't either, because it's still connected to cables, and those cables are for the fans and for the LEDs in the card. They're very easy to get rid of. There's one right here, and then I believe the other cable is also on that side of the card. So this one just came out on its own when I pulled the card up. Uh, you don't want to pull at the cables to get these out or at the wires. You should generally uh, just kind of try and get some leverage in there under the actual connector head and pull it up. You can also stab it with a flat head, which is what EVGA recommends on the other side of this thing. So you see I just kind of pulled it out. But if you take a flat head, if you're really worried about it, you can push the flat head against that sort of clip right there in the middle of the header. If you push there and then pull up at an angle, they'll come out. Uh, just don't pull by the wires. But mine came out pretty easily. So this thing's taken apart. We've got the cooler. This is, you'll have to clean off. We'll do that in a moment. The GPU is now exposed. So the GPU is the silicon piece underneath that sh will be shining when we clean it covered by thermal paste right now. Just for vocabulary reasons, this green is the substrate. You do not need to clean the thermal paste off the substrate. It doesn't really hurt, but you don't need to worry about it if there's a ton on there. These are your chokes or your inductors. This is part of the VRM. This is part of what is heating up and causing the articles online to talk about thermal issues with the cards. So we need to cover these and create contact from these to the heat sink itself, which we'll go back on this orientation where this side aligns to this. Uh, so we're, we're going to have a thermal pad right there. But before that, I do want to clean off this thermal compound to do this. You can take a Q-tip or a cotton ball or just a paper towel. 
and put some rubbing alcohol on it. 90% or better is preferred. I've got 91% here, that's fine. You could use a different percentage if you've got it, but that's just basically gonna clean this stuff right off, get it stuck to the paper towel, and then the alcohol itself will evaporate very quickly from the GPU, so we don't need to worry about drying it really. And do the same thing for the heat sink. And what we're gonna do in a moment is use this thermal compound that EVGA provided us with, and you'll get it too with your kit, and, uh, and that will be what replaces the stuff that just came off. So this compound that EVGA provides is actually not too bad. It's a five watt per meter Kelvin compound, which is right there. Five watts per meter Kelvin is pretty average, so we can certainly use that. You won't need to buy anything special. You don't have to clean the compound off of the GPU, but it will be better for you long run. Let's go ahead and get this mod started. So first of all, we only need the thin one. This is the 27, 26 millimeter wide strip, the narrow strip that will go here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this now, which is cleaning to me, and that is concerning enough that I'm gonna go ahead and put it on an anti-static bracelet as well, just uh, for protection of the electrical components because static electricity is bad. Again, not a 100% required step, but not bad to do. So this thin strip, you just need to get kind of positioned such that the edge of it is against the edge of the base plate, and you'll be able to see this in a moment more clearly once I move the cardboard. And then center it over the, uh, the chokes or the inductors if you prefer. Let's try and center that a bit better. Okay, and then also make sure you peel off the piece of plastic here that's still stuck on my uh, thermal pad. So once you've peeled the plastic off your thermal pad, we're gonna put it right on top of the chokes or the inductors. I'm gonna try and center it. And it should not exceed the length of the base plate. So just kind of cap it right there at the edge of the base plate like I've done. You can see we're right at the border of, of where it can be. I apply a little bit of force right there because there was an air pocket. So we are in good shape now. The next step is to reassemble the card. Before getting to this step, I would suggest taking a few photos of the card for your own reference, of the cooler for your own reference, and for warranty purposes. If something goes wrong here, EVGA will assist you. They've kind of already said that uh, in, their, in their replacement upgrades warranty policy. So that's all done. Now we need to put some thermal paste on and take the stuff they gave you. We just need a dot here in the middle. Now, uh, <laughs> let me just say here for a second that YouTube's favorite thing to do is to criticize thermal paste application. For a GPU, it's not quite as sensitive as a CPU where you have an IHS and you've got your cold plate and that's you don't want too much thermal paste in there. This thing, one, we're not worrying about a conductive thermal compound that's gonna short anything. So getting this on the substrate's not gonna hurt your card. Secondly, it's a GPU, so there's no IHS. It's just, we're basically exposed straight to the cold plate. So don't worry too much about this, right? <laughs> if you read the comments, it's gonna be like, that's way too much, that's way too little. Don't worry about it, just copy pretty closely to what I'm doing. Uh, so we're gonna put on a dot. It's gonna be about the size of a grain of rice, maybe a little bit tinier. And I'm gonna go a little extra. So that should really be enough. The, the cold plate will spread the rest of it on its own. We don't need a ton. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit more than that either. This is just YouTube's favorite thing to criticize for some reason. So, so we've got enough compound on there. Now we need to reattach this cooler part. So it's the same steps in reverse. These uh, plugs go into their headers on the board. I'm gonna have to move this a little bit out of the way of the camera, but should be able to do it okay. 
So first one plugs in. And again, make sure you've got all of the plastic off of that thermal pad before you put this back together. There's one strip of plastic on each side, uh, and then it should be bare, like kind of adhesive material. So you can see I've got the connectors reconnected. So we are ready to assemble the card. I'm gonna finish putting this together. And now we just need to flip it over to the back side where we can get access to the screws. Uh, there's four screw holes, line it up. And kind of put the card, rest it there. I'm just gonna move this board until it matches. That is about where we want to be. So for these, you just turn until it stops. You don't need to apply a crazy amount of force. They are spring tensioned. So turn it until it stops. It has stopped, so I'm going to stop turning it. You can see we've got our card back together. And now the next step is to do the rear side. So for this side, we have to take apart the back plate, take the back plate off the card. The screws holding it in, there's just these ones outlined in metal hold it in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thirteen screws total that we have to take out. You don't have to take out the IO uh, panel protector thing. So one, I'm just going to turn this over and dump them all out at the end. Two, three, four. So at this point, depending on which card you have, there are rubber bumpers on these things, like one here, one here, one here. These we can leave alone on this FTW card. This model was sent to me by EVGA for this tutorial. It looks like they may have already removed some of these pieces, so I don't have to. But for their, from their instructions, there's a, an indication for the FTW model that you'd have to remove some of the rubber bumpers right here, so three of them total. And then for the non-FTW model, there's one, which will be right here. And to give you an idea, if you have a non-FTW card, you will have a rubber bumper right here, but kind of between the E and the V. If you have an FTW card, then you'll have two strips here, and then one around the E area uh, of the card, of the back plate. So that's where you would have to remove on an FTW these two plus this one. On a non-FTW, you'd have to remove one that's right around here. So that's, uh, that's a step we don't have to do. It's been already completed, it looks like. So now we're ready to apply this thing. This is the second one of these. This wider one goes to the back of the VRM. The VRM, we can look at it here. This is all in this section. And EVGA is almost kind of overcompensated with this thing, but I mean, more power to them, I guess. They kind of had a problem in the, in the first place. So we've got our MOSFETs and inductors are right here and capacitor banks, all that. So this thing, same process, get your plastic off of there on one side at least. Again, it is static cleaning, which is not ideal, but it's not going to hurt anything probably. Uh, so now we can place this pad dead center of the... Uh, the VRM in between the four screw points I showed you earlier, which are going to be one two, three, four. So you're going between those and you want to cover these parts primarily. So don't worry if you get that on your pads because that is plastic that'll peel off. So we're going to go ahead and cover it just like this. If you're happy with it, we can start pushing it down on the card. I'm f reasonably happy with it. You're going to want this to be within the confines of the back plate, which is outlined on the card in white. So if you're within the white outline, then you're in good shape. It's going to stretch a little bit, but that's fine. Just reposition it. At this point, the rest of the pressure will be applied by the back plate. We can now put that back on. The back plate should have four thermal pads right here. That's the back side of the GPU. You can see it lines up here, these four points on the GPU. And so now just drop that on there, line up the screw holes, and 
you have modded your card to have thermal pads. So at this point, it's just screwing back in those 14 or however many screws it was that I said earlier. So that is how to mod your GTX 1080 FTW with thermal pads. You don't have to get the kit from EVGA. It is free, but if they get backed up or they don't have them in your country or whatever, you can buy your own pads with the measurements I gave you earlier. So that was something like two millimeters thick and something like a 57 wide and a 26 wide for the measurements of the pad. So you could buy those yourself and you could even buy a wider kit on Amazon or wherever else. I'll link some in the description below. It's an affiliate link if you want to help us out, but you can buy some from Amazon and then just cut them to size. That works perfectly fine. You just cut them with scissors. Uh, so that is how you do the, the mod. Pretty easy. That will basically solve all your problems. If you're really ultra concerned, EVJ will help you out with a replacement, or you could also download the VBIOS update, which sets a more aggressive fan speed, uh, but you do sacrifice some noise in favor of that. So that's all. As always, Patreon link in the postal video. If you want to help us out directly for this type of content, that will be the best way to help us. Otherwise, subscribe for more right down there. Links in the description below for more information. I'll see you all next time.